Woo! Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Michelle Obama, the comedy show. This is very odd. I have no idea if I'm just talking to myself or if people are out there listening. Either way, your applause is just overwhelming. I'm so happy to be here right now. Uh, my co-host is uh, Equal Nerd. Uh, please give it up for your co-host, Noah Crowley. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Noah Crowley. I'm the co-host of this show. We've been doing these shows for a while now. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is fun. Uh, these are weird times, let me tell you. Um, like, I didn't know... I didn't know things would get this crazy so fast. Uh, Cause I feel like it's a race to see which apocalypse will happen first. Uh, like it was robots for a hot second was the big concern. And now I think we might've messed that up. Like we're going to kill ourselves off before robots even had the chance. Uh, and then there are all the other ones. Like when they talk about the horsemen of the apocalypse, I didn't know it'd be like a horse race. I know it'd be like, coming around the final stretch. It's war in the lead, but fading fast. Up next, famine is looking to strong charge, but out of nowhere, out of nowhere, it's pestilence, pestilence, the break. Oh, folks, it's going to be a final. It'll finish. Let's check out the photo finish of this one, folks. Uh, so that's how we're doing. Uh, let's check in. Check in about bright things, though. Let's uh, bring Kasha back on, and we'll talk. we'll talk about becoming. <laughs> Wow, those were the good old days when robot apocalypses were much better. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, so we read Becoming when it first came out about like, what, a year, more than a year ago now? Yeah, just about uh, a year ago now. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, some of the stuff that made me laugh then, I mean, it still makes me laugh now when you still look through the book. What were some of your favorite moments, Noah? Um, I think all my favorite moments really to just like how much of a person Michelle Obama came across across because like first ladies I don't know they've got this weird reputation of being it's more like a position than a person who's in it and she was the first person who had that oh that's like an actual woman uh, like she talked about when she was young uh, getting into a fist fight uh, uh, with another girl in her neighborhood and that like at first that struck me as weird for a first lady to be talking about like hey sometimes you gotta throw down some hands sometimes they don't respect you you got to make them respect you. Uh, but then she framed it as part of her growing up in the South Side and being a Black woman. She had to advocate for herself. Uh, and if she was going to succeed the way she was, that was something she had to go through. So that uh, really humanized her. She talked about things like smoking weed and hooking up, which is both things that like you would never expect from a first lady. Uh, she talked about like her early relationships. Here's a crazy fact. Before she started dating Barack Obama, her previous boyfriend uh, came out of college and wanted to become a professional mascot. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. But the trade up from professional mascot to president of the United States <laughs> is perhaps the biggest boyfriend trade up in history. That is, that is amazing what happened there. Like, you thought that dating, like, the quarterback on the football team was good? Like, try future president of the United States. <laughs> well, here's one other crazy note from the book. Early in the relationship, things did not look great for Barack Obama. Like, there's one part where they were just married. They were just starting a family. Uh, he had a book advance, but he had not finished the book. So instead of just like, hey, let me write out this book really quick, finish it out. He flew all the way around the world to Indonesia to write it on his own time while he left Michelle and the kids at home to fend for themselves. And I was like, it's good that we know how this story turns out. Cause if we didn't, I'd be like, no, Michelle, you gotta leave them. You gotta leave them now. This is a thinking shift. You gotta abandon while you have the chance. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad they turned out all right as a couple. Yeah. And one thing that people were really surprised about were, was um, they went to marriage counseling, which mm -hmm. was surprising. I don't know. I just feel like, Michelle in general was a much more relatable first lady. Like, I mean, she went to marriage counseling. We'll see later on some of the stuff that she did while she was in the white house, but like she like did all these workouts and was good at kickboxing. I mean, can you imagine like Laura Bush going out there and doing some kickboxing that would look, I just can't even, I can't even imagine that. Yeah. I'm sure she has like a killer sweet tea recipe and like etiquette advice. 
But that's like all I kind of expect out of the Bush first ladies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Bush first ladies, if you're tuning in live, we didn't mean to shade you that much this early on. But also, thanks for tuning in and donate to us. It goes to support uh, the performers and Solid State. We know you have the money. Thank you. <laughs> uh, one other thing, getting into her professional life, uh, like I've seen one or two people comment like, oh, she's just riding Barack's coattail to the stand or nothing. She was the head of her field in three different jobs. She was a high lawyer, uh, like a high-powered lawyer. Then she became the head of a, a nonprofit and then she was uh, the, uh, working with the administration of a hospital. And like the more I read through this book, like the worse I felt about my own life. I was like, ooh, I should be doing a little bit more right now. I was like, damn, Michelle, save some good jobs for the rest of us. <laughs> and it's funny because, yeah, even if she, she was a career woman, if she never met Barack, you know, she would have been, I mean, she was successful before she met Barack, but then when she met Barack, she kind of had a shifted what her uh, mindset was, at least for those eight years. And to me, it just shows like such good multitasking. Like I've actually learned a lot of multitasking um, uh, during the quarantine. I've improved a lot of my skills. Like uh, during this quarantine, I've like read a couple of books. Uh, I cleaned my oven. I built a pizza oven. Um, I cleaned the shower. And I did all of that while fighting daily with my boyfriend. So I've been <laughs> very good at multitasking. And I really feel like I'm channeling my inner Michelle Obama. There. I'm not going to say fighting, but there were some words setting up the Zoom call happening just before we went live. So I can attest <laughs> to some of this. But y'all are a good power couple. I support y'all. <laughs> I love my boyfriend. It's out there for everyone to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we move on to her as first lady. Uh, I think reading through the book, I like the first half of it so much more than the second half where she talked about first lady, just because Michelle liked her childhood so much more than the idea of being first lady. Like when she was first lady, she just felt all the pressure and the anxiety of everybody constantly watching her. Uh, there's one chapter that opens up with a straight up dream sequence of her and her family being chased down by tigers. And that was kind of the explanation of what it was like to be first lady. Just this weird, like constant anxiety of, oh no, we're going to be devoured. And to be clear, this was before um, Tiger King came out. So tigers actually were scarier than people who were raising them. So yeah. it was actually a very scary dream at that time. Should, should I share that one stress dream? I, it's not even a stress dream. It's just a dream I really had clearly because people have been talking about all, all the dreams they've had during this quarantine. Um, I had one dream where I was a private detective and it was me and my partner almost got murdered by some, like we are investigating this murder and then someone else tried to wipe us out and we figured out it was these drug dealing teens and we went to talk to them and we were like, Oh no, you're not you're not our case at all. Like what you're doing is not great, but it's kind of your business, so we're not gonna stop you. Just stop trying to murder us. And then as we are pulling away from them, uh someone drove up to their house and shot them up. And I thought that might have been like a weird metaphor for COVID. How about like like we can advise people, hey, don't do risky things, but at some point it's on them and they gotta make their own decisions. At least that's how I interpreted it. Your dreams are way more interesting than mine. Um, <laughs> before I go to bed, I actually read my to-do lists and then I dream about completing them. Like, I'm not lying. I bought, <laughs> I bought all these bagels and I like to meal prep these bagels with bagel sandwiches. And I dreamed that I cooked all the eggs and like sausage and assembled 12 bagel sandwiches. And I was <laughs> so happy during that dream until I woke up and found out that that never happened and the bagels are still there well, i mean you get to actually go and then do that dream then. that's pretty cool <laughs> you should write out a dream of all your favorite things you should like write out like a to-do list of like like winning all the comedy awards being a millionaire being happier than i've ever been and then maybe you'll dream that the next night i don't know i'm apparently i'm only into immediate success not yeah. nothing that will happen in like 10 years so You're gonna dream about building your pizza oven <laughs> yeah or uh dream about being first lady one day okay okay 
All right. Uh, I think we've uh, blabbered on enough about this book. Um, it's, a, it's a very good book. You, we will be covering a lot about it. But uh, for our next segment, we actually have a special guest comedian uh, who is doing a book report on it. Um, I'm very happy to announce our next comedian. They have been killing it all over the DC comedy scene. Please give it up for Chelsea Short. Woo! Yo, hey, what's up? I'm so excited to be with y'all. How's it going? I wish I had my mic on because I really enjoyed y'all's performance so far. I was laughing. Should I just get started? Yeah? Yeah. All right, let's get going. Perfect. Let me share my screen. Boom, 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 boom. Let's do it. Becoming the unread book report, an attempt by Chelsea Short. So I will let you know that I haven't read Becoming, um, nor have I watched the recently released documentary. <laughs> but I do, I do have several copies of the hard book, uh, the hardback book, because I have uh, one black mother and several black aunties, and they all pre-ordered like 20 copies because they're like super ride or die for Michelle, which I understand. But now that's the only gift I've received for the past two Christmases. I think I've had like two hardback copies of Becoming in my stocking for the last two Christmases. Um, and I still haven't read it. Uh, shame on me. Um, but I will now, um, I will now present to you what I imagine would be the memoir's biggest takeaways if I had read it. But Again, I have not read it. Let us, let us begin. Becoming, the education. Uh, before not reading the memoir, Becoming, I had no idea that by the time she was aged 23 and three quarters, Michelle Obama had graduated from all of the Ivy League universities, including those that I had heard about before and a few that I didn't have the grades to even know existed. And, and that by her next birthday, she had founded and graduated from her own Ivy League institution, Beautifully Brown University which is highly renowned for its Department of Theoretical and Applied Bad Bitchness. <laughs> but how, you ask, was she able to accomplish all of this before the age that I was when I had my first kiss? Now, I don't know why I put a self-burn in here, but I'm most myself during quarantine, I guess. She did it using the three Ds. The three Ds. Discipline dedication, and a girthy one to keep you sane. Or, you know, damn good pussy, if that is so your inclination. It's college, feel free to experiment. <laughs> That's what I'm into, do it, okay. Now, as of now, I, uh, I'm i still looking to complete my equivalent set of the three Ds, uh, which would be more obvious if I had not put up this beautiful background and you could see that I live in a basement as a 32 and a half year old. Okay, of course, I am halfway kidding. Michelle Obama, she may have used the three Ds or however many Ds she wanted. I, I'm not here to slut shame. What she really used to graduate from all of those Ivy League universities was this, a time turner. Yup, yup, from Harry Potter, yup. In recent years, Michelle uses the time Turner sparingly. She only uh, uses it to go back in time and like do more push ups and a few more bicep curl reps or to race herself while training for a 5K like a ghost in Mario Kart. <laughs> the next big takeaway from the memoir Becoming Becoming How to Get a Man in Chicago, Lesson One Duck. You have to stay in the game to win the game. Let's move on. Becoming. How to find a good man in Chicago. Lesson number two. What's in a name? I think we can know from Michelle and Barack's relationship. You got to give a man with a corny name a chance. Honestly, I don't know how many men uh, named Barry get pussy at all. I know it was the 80s. It was a different time. But there are some names that are that have been consistently corny throughout the decades. Um, but I think now's the time to like take a chance. You know, uh, if there's anything we know about 
Barry from Chicago is that he's not in a gang, okay? So what other names might we consider? Garfield, Murray, the two in Glenn, he doesn't get a lot of play. Philbert, Gilbert, or really any name ending in Bert that isn't Robert. Um, Albert, Elbert, Delbert, Cuthbert, Engelbert, Wilbert, to name a few. Um, before I move on to the next slide, I do wanna press, press upon you all that though we are opening our dating pools to more names, Chester, still a no-go. The name Chester is and will forevermore be off limits. No Chesters. Uh, moving on to the next big takeaway from Michelle Obama's Becoming, which I have not read. <laughs> Becoming, be, be nice to the right white people. Um, uh, to be honest, uh, this is a section of the book that I haven't really read that well. Uh, I didn't read any of the book, but this this part really went over my head. I'll have to not read it again a little bit more closely. Uh, next. <laughs> Becoming grace under tire pressure. That was my that was my attempt at writing a cliched news headline. Um, <clears throat> again, I will remind you, I have not read this memoir, uh, but I did love the anecdote that Michelle writes in the memoir about attending a NASCAR race while she was first lady. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that Michelle attending the race in the first place to be incredibly brave, like I would feel more comfortable at a KKK rally than a NASCAR event because at a Klan meeting, I'd at least know that one person in the room is an undercover like US Marshal and I wouldn't feel so alone, but that's not that's not it at a NASCAR race. Like, you for real alone, Black people. Okay, so while at the race, the president and First Lady Obama were booed, and Michelle was sp specifically abused with the name Moo Shell. Moo Shell, right? Now, Michelle, with her infinite grace, initially gave the audience that booed her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe these NASCAR fans were just upset that her Let's Move initiative had encouraged them to also turn right. But no, it really was ignorance and racism. These fans were calling her Michelle as an insult to her weight because these NASCAR fans thought that Michelle Terminator Arms Obama was fat. Uh, a NASCAR fan calling Michelle Obama fat is the greatest workout their jowls have had ever. Um, sure, <laughs> I guess you can call her fat. Go ahead. Now, uh, this is what's so touching about what Michelle does, right? So in order to process her emotions uh, about this incident, Michelle consulted with her wisest spiritual advisor herself from the future. Remember, she has a time turner. Okay, so her spiritual advisor reminded her that in some places, in some regions in this world, in some religions in this world, the animal that makes the sound, the cow, is considered holy and is highly respected and protected because it is such a peaceful, stable, and life-giving creature. And like a cow on an essential road in India, Michelle Obama stops traffic. She turned the abuse of the ignorant into the motivation for the majesty. In conclusion, I have only this to say. Hey, queen, girl, you have done it again. Constantly raising the bar for us all and doing it flawlessly. Michelle walks so Megan can run. Thank you and good night. <laughs> Namaste. I, I agree with that. I agree with all of the holiness and the appreciation that we feel from Michelle Obama. Um, I will say uh, uh, that at times it was so lyrical what you were saying in this unread book report that I started mm -hmm. snapping. And it just oh, thank you, thank you. You know, I've been taking a Shakespeare class and. Uh, Maybe some of his poetry is bleeding into what I'm doing. You know, I could only I could only be so blessed. You know, what I'm yeah, saying? but with better grammar. Yeah, oh. nice. better grammar. 
Thank yeah, you. yeah. Thank um, you. So there is one thing that I wanted to ask you, um, Noah. I don't know if you're coming back or not, uh, but feel free to chime in. So when we did this show like a year ago, uh, I remember <laughs> you said, oh, I haven't read the book, but yeah. I have a copy of it and I'll read it. A straight up year ago, a straight up year ago, you're like, oh, I've been meaning to read this book so much. I am definitely going to read it soon. You even told us that for like future shows. You're like, let me know ahead of time and I'll read the book. <laughs> I, you know, you know what? You know what is so true? I've been like on, I've been on the dating apps trying to <laughs> talk with people. I've been trying to talk with people. And you know, like some of these girls will be like, so what was the last book you read? And, and like, I'm on my couch, like swiping. And I'm like, uh, 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 um, Buzzfeed, Buzzfeed isn't a book, but like I read, I read a lot of news. I do read a lot of news. I read a lot of blogs, um, but I, I haven't read a book in a while. I haven't read like a book and like a fiction book or something in a long time. But I, well, I constantly- now. Now, when someone on Tinder or whatever you're on asks you, what book have you read? You can just say, you know, I did a book report on Becoming. <laughs> and then they'll be like, what are you, in fourth grade? And you're like, no, I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. No, I think Becoming is like it's next to my bed in the hopes that if I ever sleep with anyone again, <laughs> like, you know, out of this quarantine, they'll just be impressed. It's not really a book. It's more so like a prop right now. Becoming also, has a different meaning next to your bed is what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a command. Exactly, exactly. I also if like how the- If, I the ever, idea, if we ever get to touch people. I also like how the idea of there being like a normal productive person out there getting stuff done, you're like, there's no possible way they did this normally. There has to be magic involved. The only way there could be someone who actually did good at school and had a good life is magic that's the only reason no no i mean i i definitely she of course she has these natural these natural abilities the natural and arms impact. all natural arms yeah and natural arms i mean I, I i do of course i never meant to imply that she isn't as intelligent as she has proven and has earned but uh i mean to graduate from all these damn ivy leagues you got and- magic her high school counselor told her that she, she, she she's not Princeton material. And you know what she did? She went to Princeton and then got that counselor fired. I don't know if she got him fired. I just know she doesn't work there anymore. Damn. <laughs> that, would, that wouldn't be a bad move, though. Yeah. I think the reason it's just so crazy to us is just because we're comics and we get nothing done normal people-wise. We're like, <laughs> what? Getting getting good lives together? How, how must be magic? I mean... I like mean, we've been planning this comedy show since the beginning of the quarantine and we're just now doing it 60 days in. <laughs> well, no, I think that's, I mean, I know this is a comedy show, but I think that's still pretty great. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I was massively depressed when this first, when this first happened. And like as a comedian, you want to get out and you want to talk to people and you want that feedback and we couldn't have it. And uh, yo, I didn't even know I was depressed. Like I didn't shower for a long time, dude. <laughs> Like, like you know how when you, uh, you know how when you don't shower for long enough, you can start smelling yourself. Oh, that was me yesterday. Yeah. No, that's like at me midday. Midday. At I'm like quarantine. Yo, I like could like after a couple of days, I could smell myself, and then like I got numb to my own smell, oh. and then like a couple of days later, I still hadn't showered because I was massively depressed. And then it like cycled back around and I could smell myself again times two. Like my nose was like becoming numb to the stench. It was fucking wild. Becoming. Yeah. You were becoming. This is the first time I put on clothes in uh, months. <laughs> well, right, well, Chelsea, I'm happy to see you. I'm very, yes. very excited to see your face and you were hilarious. And thank you so much. <laughs> All right, I'm going to drink wine until uh, you need me again. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good segue, talking about Stinky B.O. for our next segment. Um, I was going to say, speaking of self-care, but sure, st- st- <laughs> speaking of Stinky B.O. too. We have two different perspectives because we're two different people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Noah and I, um, 
really took into heart what Michelle Obama tried doing during her time as first lady. So we prepared a little segment for you called uh, Working It Like Michelle. Hit it, DJ. One of Michelle's initiatives as First Lady was the Let's Move campaign. It was designed to get kids active and help combat childhood obesity. Uh, but right now during the pandemic, we could all use a little bit of help keeping active. Uh, so we're gonna do some workouts directly from Michelle Obama. Uh, we don't have everything, so we're gonna improvise. Like I don't have a jump rope, so I'm gonna do some shooting. Michelle's okay. initiatives as First uh, Lady was the do. Let's Move campaign. It was designed to get kids active and help combat When you're jumping rope, you don't want to come off the floor too high. It's not that much of an impact exercise if you only come up off the floor just enough to see the light. You want to make sure you keep your elbows tucked in. You don't want to use a whole arm swing. Just nice and easy turns of the wrist. One of the things we believe in is variety is the spice. So we're going to make sure we keep a lot of spice in what we do. So we're going to use the medicine ball. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> and we're gonna do several different ab movements to challenge the abs in different planes. So it's real important to add symmetrical strength by using different planes. <laughs> the in and out squat with the bench. That's an explosive kind of plyometric movement. We're using that movement to add explosiveness to the quads or to your legs. We will go from a standing position, explode up on top of the bench into a squat. We're not afraid to lift weights. It's really important when you're thinking about benching to make sure your wrist is right over your elbow. And you're keeping that in line, and so you're kind of coming down to 90 degrees. You don't want to overstretch when you're doing a bench. and then you're pressing it right up above your chest. Don't forget, always drink up. Thank you guys for uh, watching our very productive workout. Um, I will say that the extent of my exercise, uh, besides that video, was buying that exercise ball, which you saw. See, I actually did exercises this whole time. That's what makes it even sadder that that's still my level of fitness, but hey, <laughs> to each their own. It was fun, and uh, I re it makes me realize I need to exercise more regularly. Cool, cool. So let's get into this doc talk. Doc talk, doc talk, woo. So the Becoming documentary, uh, we watched it. I think for me, it was good with some great moments. Like I think the bar for a documentary has been raised so much for like expectations. Like in this doc, you will not see Michael Jordan crying. You will not wonder halfway through if Michelle Obama killed somebody with tigers. Uh, but there were some really great and touching moments. Uh, I will say that while I'm watching it, especially during the quarantine, I was like, you know, this is just a really feel good movie. She, it's not political. She's not talking about any policies or any of the current circumstances. It's literally her talking about how she wants to go around and inspire other young people, people. women, men, whoever it might be. Yeah, there is a part where they're talking about uh, all these kids were asking like, hey, the world seems so terrible out there right now. What do you recommend? And she said, well, just focus on you and what you can do in your life and what you can achieve. And like before quarantine, that was a good message. But even now during quarantine, like, ooh, that's a real good message right now. Not to worry about the entire state of the world, but just yourself. Uh, so yeah. that was inspiring. 
Yeah. Uh, when I was watching it, um, my boyfriend was actually uh, walking by and he came and listened to like one part of it. And he's like, that's good advice. I was like, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Uh, I think my absolute favorite parts were her interactions with her family. Oh, yeah. Uh, both her brother and her mother. Uh, There's one part where they're, they're talking and her mom brought up how her brother has all the good wines. <laughs> and I was like, wow, it's cool to know, like, no matter, like, how old you get or what you do in life, the same family dynamics will still be in place. You'll still always be the same amount of petty. And, like... <laughs> In the middle of that, uh, Michelle asks, like, all right, well, let me have some of this good wine. And she drinks a little bit and makes a face like, oh, your your wine ain't shit. I've had good wine. She doesn't say it out loud, but it's the clearest facial expression I have ever seen. Yeah, and I love in the documentary when she's constantly saying she has her mom and her brother with her. And she's, like, saying this even in, like, interviews with, like, Oprah and other people. I don't know, Oprah, but probably Oprah. Um, she was saying... Yeah, my brother is my mom's favorite, even though I'm first lady. It's like, what more do I have to do for you, mom? And you know that it's true because nowhere in the documentary does the brother or the mother say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was young. So I have three older brothers and there's this one brother who just like was the golden child. He did everything he did everything that they wanted and he's like the only doctor in our family and we would give him the nickname uh, uh sonani chokro which means golden child in hindi and we would call him that as his, as his nickname and my parents never corrected us it's <laughs> <laughs> great it's <That's> great <laughs> also like her brother does not stop shit talking to her too like at one point he's like oh it's like you've got three belts on like like you should be having a gun holster on there and this is like a woman who's been internationally lauded for her fashion sense and he's still roasting her like <laughs> men don't know nothing that's all i gotta say <laughs> all right um i'm excited for our next segment um one thing that i learned during this documentary and the book was being first lady was not all that it was cracked out to be. Uh, it was very stressful. We had kind of already went how she had to put her life on pause to do this thing. And a lot of people have been asking her, um, is she going to run for president? So uh, our next segment and our next guest comedian. Okay, now can she go? There is growing heat on Michelle Obama to run for president. I will not. Hi. Michelle Obama has made her feelings very clear. She does not want to be the president. People keep asking her. They keep making the request. Michelle, be the president. Run for president. I know how this feels. I'm getting a lot of the same kind of um, the same kind of attention, honestly. And so I think I speak for both of us when I say, please leave us alone. Stop asking us to be the president. Um, we shouldn't have to give reasons why we don't want to be the president because you know you don't usually really have to give reasons. But I made a list again on behalf of both Michelle and myself. Um, all of these apply to both of us. Okay. All right. Um, first, you know, it's important to us that we, we want to spend more time with Barack and Sasha and Malia. Um, you know, they're our family and they're important to us. <laughs> um, another, I, everybody knows, every, I think everyone's clear now. Um, there's only two main perks to being the president. One, you get a bobblehead made of yourself, a mass produced. Michelle and I both already have that. Uh, two, you get to know about all the secret White House ghosts. And, um, you know, you don't have to be the president for that. She, you know, you can either live in the Oval Office or adjacent to it or however the White House is laid out. Or, you know, you can be just very close personal friends with the Obamas or whoever lives in the White House and you get to know about the ghosts. Um, you know, I... Uh, 
I like Michelle, you know, I don't want to deal with the nuclear codes. That seems real stressful. Um, and, uh, all right, we wrote this thing about how I was going to joke about how I'm also very important to the black community. But then I was like, I don't know if I can even joke about that because I'm not. But and then I got and then I'm like, well, I'll just say it and then I'll spiral about that. That could be funny, right? But it turns out I'm just getting stressed out. So that's that's anyway, I feel like we've made it pretty clear that we don't want to be the president. And Again, the reasons are exactly the same. Um, and just please respect us. And that's, thank you. Thank you. Are you okay there, Sandy? I'm all right. It's been, you know, I'm getting a lot of media attention these days and I don't like it. You're you're very stressed out about talking about this. And I'm, I, I'm, I hope that yeah. people will leave you alone once and for all. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. Good gravy. Yeah, I mean, you could work on your second book instead, or... I know, I could. I, You know, taking the time and having the second documentary about my life and my book tour, that would be nice. We've just, I don't know, uh, Michelle, Shelley, and I, we've been talking a lot. And it's, you know, we're going through the same thing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's hard uh, when everyone's just going down your throat and you have nowhere else to go and you're like please I don't want to be having the shoulders of the world on me you know I can shake off my shoulders of the world pretty easy but you know stronger than I am so yeah happy about well, that thank you very much Sandy Benton and thank you for this PSA on behalf of you and Michelle and I will stop asking you if you will run for president Please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I only had two seconds and I cursed in those two seconds. Great. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for me and Michelle. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Noah, you've been having uh, some, you've been following Michelle's uh, dietary guidelines, the new reformed ones, correct? Mm -hmm. Uh. So yeah, let me go into the, the screen about that. As uh, I've already said, my dietary uh, guidelines have been bagel sandwiches when I actually make them and don't dream about making them. They have egg on them, spinach, pepper jack cheese, uh, the scrambled egg, by the way, scrambled egg, um, some pork sausage from a feral hog that uh, was hunted in Florida. Ooh, cool. Let me bring it up. Ooh, now we get to see all of <laughs> Noah's face. But ooh, that's so picturesque. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, uh. Noah, is that all your porn, all, all your porn folders up there? On your <laughs> uh, no, I made sure to close all those out before we started this. Uh, let's get all of this. them. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, now it's just food porn. <laughs> uh, where's the start? So Michelle Obama, uh, she redesigned the idea of the food pyramid that had been around before her. Uh, back in the old days, uh, we stopped with the uh, the whole idea of a pyramid, which was a weird idea for how to organize foods. Like nobody eats food stacked one on top of the other. Uh, also, let me let me share this as a presentation. There we go. Uh, uh, so yeah, this was the original idea for the food pyramid. Uh, Michelle Obama decided to change things up. She introduced the food plate. This was a much more intuitive way to have of thinking about food. Uh, Cause you can see directly on your plate, how much of each food you're supposed to be eating. Uh, plus they kind of toned down grains a little bit and bumped up vegetables. Like apparently whenever we came up with the idea of a food pyramid, we are all about them grains. And now we're like, they're important, but they're not everything. Maybe they don't need to be the base. So based on this, we're going to look at some of the meals I've been going through. I tracked them to see, how I've been doing stacked up with that. Uh, here's the basic format for it. Uh, 
the first day I had uh, a chicken salad. It's your classic, your vegetables, your proteins, a couple of cucumbers in there. It was a good start. It was a great start. Uh, but I did add cheese and dressing to it, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of a salad. It makes it just another meal and not super more healthy. And if we had stopped there, this would be perfectly fine. This would be adequate. Uh, but then I had a Zoom meeting that day, a Zoom happy hour. So I was like, all right, we'll have one drink during the Zoom happy hour. And in the middle of this Zoom happy hour, I realized, oh, this is this is terrible. Uh, I'm missing p interacting with people. And also, some of these people are not the ones I want to be interacting with. So in the middle of the Zoom happy hour, I had two more beers. And you're saying, all right, well, if you stop there, you would still be great. You'd still be doing OK. Uh, but after that, I had a whiskey drink, I had a vodka drink, I had a lager drink, I had a cider drink. I say the song that reminds me of the good times. Ooh, I sing the songs that remind me of the best times. Uh, at least that's my memory of the night. Things get hazy after the first three beers. But needless to say, that was not a win in the Michelle Obama playbook. So I was like, all right, next day we're going to do better. Let's check out the next meal. It was the same chicken salad. What are we, the Rockefellers? We're going to have a different meal every day? No. Uh, so again, if we had stopped here, this would be perfect. This would be wonderful. But in the middle of cleaning up the dishes, I was like, all right, why not just a handful of goldfish? They'll be all right. Uh, and then I went downstairs to check up on the TV, watch some news. Might as well grab a couple more goldfish to watch. And then the news was super depressing. So I just kind of wandered around my house. Uh, and in the middle of this, I like mainlined three more handfuls of goldfish. And at that point, I had gotten to the bottom of the goldfish. I was, mind you, this is not the gallon size. I am not a monster. But I had eaten all of the goldfish. And I realized, oh, this isn't great. Uh, I'm spiraling here. But tomorrow's a new day. We're going to try again. And right as I was thinking all of these thoughts, out of like muscle memory, I reached for another handful of goldfish, even though I know I had eaten all of them. I had eaten an entire bag of goldfish. I reached for one more handful. And that was the saddest handful of all. Like, nutritionally, it did not contribute anything. It did not make me any worse off for the day. But emotionally, oh, that last ghost handful, that wrecked me. Uh, so that's how I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, Kasha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Make sure you stop sharing your screen so we don't have to keep staring at all these goldfish that I can't actually eat. Uh, there's nothing wrong with any uh, goldfish is what I think. Um, I would say that this is very similar uh, to my uh, plate, except mine's veggies, protein, dairy, and despair. That's been my quarantine uh, food plate. It's been good. <laughs> Um, all right, guys, our next segment, we have a very uh, hilarious stand-up comedian for you. Um, I uh, He produces shows in D.C. that I've been on before the quarantine, and he absolutely makes me laugh all the time. Please give it up for Leon Scott. Woo! Leon. All right. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> see me? Okay, nice. Hey, well, I'm not judging the, 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 the food um like graph you just showed because I am literally drinking from the skulls of my enemies right now. So um, that's how I do it. That's how I get down. Oh man. Plus uh, I've kind of been cheating right now. I was supposed to have watched becoming before coming here. I am literally watching it right now while, while the show is happening. And the only thing I am becoming is nostalgic right now. I'm becoming nostalgic for the Obamas because I miss them very much. So um, I like, remember, Remember when a scandal was like tan jackets and like showing your sleeves on your, you know, on your dress shirt or whatever? Like, remember that when that was a scandal? Remember like when we had like leadership and dignity, you know, all those things, you know, remember that? <laughs> uh, oh man, I, I, you know, I, I miss the Obamas. This is wild. And um, Noah brought up, you know, the apocalypse earlier. I have to just say this. Um, yeah, it is kind of like, it's wild. We're like on the easy apocalypse setting. Like we don't even have zombies and stuff and we're already failing. We're struggling right now. Like we have, um, we already have like a, like basically a biblical plague and like um, we got murder hornets now. So we're that far into revelations and it's just um, May. 
So I don't know. Brace yourself, y'all. Let's just hope it gets better. Um, but if not, if not, like I said, Netflix has becoming on it and is really riveting. Um, I'm about halfway through right now. It's great. I'm loving it. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, Dude, you mentioned Craig. You mentioned her brother. I feel a little bad for Craig, man, bro. I mean, first off, it's kind of cool that the, that mom, that, that, that Obama, like Mrs. O, you know, um, you know, the, the grandmother still favors Craig, but she's the only person on earth left that does at this point. Like Craig is the Charlie Murphy of the family now. Craig is like the Frank Stallone to like Sylvester. He, Craig is like the 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 is like Dustin Bieber to Justin. And I don't even know if Dustin Bieber exists. But then again, I didn't know Craig existed until this documentary. So therefore, <laughs> boom. Dustin Bieber, that's Craig right there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm also feeling, I'm also feeling good. You know, just let me see. I'm feeling good watching Michelle sell out arenas. That's pretty dope. She's like, um, it's like she's just packing out stadiums, which is amazing. I mean, first off, she has Oprah there, but that's not Oprah. That's Michelle. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Oprah. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Oprah. That's like everybody. Um, the only people that got that joke were like old black people that saw The Temptations. Um, TV movie because there was a actor named Leon who said that shit. Except he said, "Ain't nobody coming to you, Otis." I, I had to explain the joke for white folks who have not who don't watch VH1 movies. Uh, yeah, so like I said, she's selling out arenas. Most musicians can't sell out arenas. My favorite musician could absolutely sell out an arena. My favorite R&B singer of all time, ladies and gentlemen, that is Barack Obama. <laughs> Yo, he's my favorite. And he became my favorite back when he was president. When he was singing, at, when he went to that, um, he gave a speech after like this mass shooting at the black church over in Charleston. It was like a horrible mass shooting. And he gave a speech and it was a riveting speech. And in the middle of the speech, he just started singing Amazing Grace. Like he just broke out in the song. And he pulled it off. This is how you know he pulled it off. When Obama was up there singing. No old lady yelled out, take your time, baby. And for those who have not been to a black church, the words take your time, baby, that is code. If someone is struggling. That means we need a miracle right now. Stop singing. It's just like, like how bless your heart. <laughs> the Baptist will fuck you. It's the exact same thing. It's, it's, I don't know, man. It's just, we didn't hear that with, with Obama. That's why he's number one president. He's high on my list of R&B singers. I don't know if he's past Stevie Wonder just yet, but he's getting there. He's, he's up there. He's, definitely, <laughs> he's, he's, he's making a case for legendary. Um, He's up there with Bruno Mars, which honestly, I, I, I relate a little bit more to Bruno Mars right now because my hairline is just kind of like doing what it wants to do right now. I am like looking more and more like a Dominican relief pitcher by the day. Like <laughs> I didn't know that I could grow a widow's peak. It's starting to like, it's crowning right now. It is literally just crowning and giving, I'm giving birth to a widow's peak very gently and slowly. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'm feeling very, very Bruno Mars-ish right now. Like real, like I'm getting more and more ambiguous by the day I was already a really beige, like waffle colored, <laughs> waffle colored black man. So I confused people already. But right now it's like, it's just like, it's, I mean, I'm in Mount Pleasant. So it's like every day people speak Spanish to me because they don't realize it. Like, I mean, I have a whole story about how racial profiling got me a job before. Um, got me hired at a place called National Council of La Raza. If you're not familiar with what that is, it is the NAACP for Hispanic folks. And so <laughs> they hired me. Two weeks into this job, my coworkers took me to lunch. And one of them was like, Leon, you're not going to believe what happened right after the interview. Your boss, she was looking at your resume. And she was like, oh, I like Leon. Leon knows the stuff. We should give Leon more money. And then she looked down and saw that I went to a black college. And she was like, wait a minute. That's not Leon. That is Leon. Oh, my God. I was me. What have we done? So, I don't know. Racial profiling worked out for the win for my wallet. It was probably pretty awesome, you know. Uh, Loved it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I talked about Craig Obama. Um, so I guess the next thing I'm going to say is, um, do you guys think that when the Trumps leave, we're going to get one of these tributes for Diamond and Silk or for Omarosa? Is that going to happen? Or this is I think nah, I didn't think so either. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Do I have any more Michelle Obama jokes? I feel like everything else I want to talk about is just me. And uh, so I guess I'll. Uh, I'll try to bring it around to Michelle Obama, but I'll, I'm going to talk about um, me once again. Like I said, um, I do. I told you this has been hitting me hard, like the the hairline issue, like the the lack of shape up, which is like, honestly, this is like a, it's a problem, but it's a specifically black problem because like this is the type of thing. We're the ones that will fry each other the most for like our hairline looking bad. Like it's to a point where like I, Virginia opened up this weekend and like barbershops and stuff. And I'm like, 
maybe I'd risk it all for a new barber. But then I'm like, no, I don't want to literally risk it all for a new barber because number one, he could mess my hair. Number two, I could die. But literally in that order, number one, he could mess my hair up. Number two, I could die. Because if I died and he hooked my hair up, at least I'm casket sharp. I'm fresh. I'm ready. If I die and my hairline is fucked up, closed casket. That's what you got to do. It's got to be closed casket. Y'all can't. I'm not going to be caught dead with my hair looking bad because I cheated on my, my barber. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I, I believe um, I can't really find a way to tie that into Michelle Obama. That's just a thought that I've been having as my hairline just turns into like phase to oblivion right now and just turns into like just a, a Bruno Mars's mass of just beige, like racial ambiguity. But like I said, once again, my name is Leon Scott. Drinking from the skulls of my enemies. Uh, check out Get Up DC every every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. All right, have a good night. <laughs> oh, thank you, Leon. All right. I like how during the middle of this pandemic, your biggest concern right now is still your hair. And yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm quite vain. <laughs> I think one of the best things about stand-up comedy is you don't have to look at yourself as you do it. And like Zoom comedy, you get a picture of your own face right there. So the whole time you're like, ooh, that's exactly what I look like as I'm talking. <laughs> this is this is not what I envisioned at all. This is totally Indeed. different. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Thanks, Leon. And right, we're going to move on to our next comic for the night. Uh, she is one of the rising stars of the DC comedy scene. She is fantastic. Uh, give it up at home. We can't hear you, but still give it up for Alani Nichelle. Alani, are you there? Hi. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> hey, Alani. Hello. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Um, I'm very excited to talk about Michelle's outfits. Yeah. Fashion was a big part of this uh, special. She both talked about it, how she used it as like a tool for herself, uh, but it was immediately noticeable if you watch the special. What did you notice from the fashion of the special, Alani? Uh, everything about Michelle is on point. Like she never, she never missed the opportunity to show out and be the best dressed woman in every room that she was in. And I remember when she first stepped on the scene, I was about, uh, I think I was like, let's see, 12 years ago. I was 12. Yeah, I was 12. And I remember her red and black dress that she wore um, to one of Obama's events. And I just thought to myself, oh my God, she's so pretty. And her dress looks really good. And like, I want to dress like her someday. So she's got, she's a style icon for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so did you have any favorite looks from the documentary itself? Because there were a lot of looks. She was serving up looks. Yeah, I think my favorite one was the white dress that she wears at the very end. Um, I have it in the slideshow. I never, like, I never memorize, like, where she wears actual outfits because yeah. I'm lazy. Um, but it's the white one where she's wearing a white ball gown and then she has on her long uh, matching white gloves. That outfit is killer. Sure do. They only showed it briefly in the documentary, but did you see those boots? Those thigh-high, golden, what? shimmery boots? Yeah. Yeah, bitch was ready to step on someone's necks in those. I was like, yes, Michelle, get it, get it. Those are boots for stomping on the patriarchy. And uh, yes. those yes. boots were so, so crazy. They even made the news like there were multiple, like, like different articles written about those boots. And for context, she, she, like, she had a different guest every night. And that night she was speaking with, uh, not Sarah Michelle Geller. I've been saying it wrong every time. Sarah Jessica Parker, who is known for her shoe game. Mm. So Michelle showed up. He's like, ooh, I'm going to show you shoes tonight, honey. She did. It was very obvious that somebody had been watching RuPaul's Drag Race that season because she just looks so good. Um, but those were those are definitely uh, statement shoes, for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I do have a presentation if you want to watch it. Well, let's get into the presentation. Okay. Um, I think I have to share my screen with y'all. Can you see it? Hold on. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, so these are all the outfits that I managed to grab from the documentary. Some of them, I think there's a couple that aren't in there, but I just personally like them. But I'll just start with the red and black one. Uh, this one, uh, basically she's coming out 
She's not here to play. She is definitely hotter than you. And so is her husband. <laughs> and he's going to rule the country. And you guys are going to have to like just deal with that. Uh, but like the cinch waist really does it for me. Uh, the color scheme. Really, I really like that. Um, this was one of the first outfits that I ever saw Michelle in. I could just tell that she was going to be uh, a very fashionable first lady. Uh, this dress, I don't remember what event that they were at, but I just really liked it because it cinches in her waist. Uh, it's very glamorous. She's got her hair done up. Uh, Obama can't stop looking at her. They definitely fooled around that night. And I mean, how can you not look at Michelle? Because <laughs> she's like the hottest thing there. Uh, Obama knows that he's a, a lucky man. Uh, here, Michelle is a little bit more casual, but she is still on point. She's got her lemon and uh, her lemon, huh, her lemon yellow and blue uh, pattern dress here. It's a it appears to be a ship dress. It's really simple, uh, but it's very elegant. It's very Michelle. Um, it definitely looks like she is on her way to go have tea with the queen, but she's probably just going to a volunteering event, which is just as cool. Uh, this coat was featured in Becoming. Um, and I really like it because uh, sometimes in the winter, it's hard to be fashionable because, you know, you got to bundle up, you got to be, uh, you got to be completely covered up. And she is, but she does it in such a way that it's still very, very sexy. Um, I love the belt. It's a nice little detail with all the, the gems on it. Uh, clearly, she's waving to her adoring fans. Uh, Obama's also waving to people who kind of like him. And she just, she looks really good. She ha she does have bangs here. I will say she's one of the few people I know that can pull off bangs. Um, probably because she doesn't cut them when she's having like a midlife crisis. Probably because she never has midlife crises, you know? She's got her shit together. Um, this is also a more casual Michelle outfit. Uh, she's here at a, uh, some kind of volunteering event or some kind of a charity event. And she's just, she's very chill. She's double deniming, but it's okay. It works for her because both of her denims are like different colors. She's very laid back. Um, again, with the bangs, uh, she's talking to a crowd that I'm sure is just enamored with every word that she has to say. I know that I would be. Uh, going back to a more glamorous mode, we have our red and black scheme co color scheme once again. Um, I'm not really sure who the Obamas are standing next to, but they look very happy to have them. Uh, Michelle just looks radiant. Uh, she's got her off the shoulder going for her, but again, it's very, very classy. Um, you know, love the, the red. It always looks good on her. It's definitely a power color. Um, and honestly, in that dress, are we sure that Obama was the president? Like, are we sure it wasn't Michelle that was running the show? Because I kind of low-key feel like she always was. Um, and Obama just was kind of like there to look good, you know? I mean, they both look good, but Michelle looks better. Uh, and this is Michelle addressing a crowd. This, again, it's more casual, but it's very like flirty, fun, and floral. And she does, she has a lot of like flirty, fun, floral outfits, and she always makes them look so good. Here, she kind of looks like my mom a little bit, which I thought was interesting. I think it's the hair. Um, She's got two white women behind her who are just, obviously in awe as they should be Karen and Sharon and then this is my favorite outfit of hers she just looks resplendent uh she's with the queen and uh that some old guy I think he's important I don't really know it doesn't matter Michelle thinks he's hilarious though if you can tell from this shot whatever he said it was had to be uh, pretty funny uh, and then Obama, you know, he looks pretty cool too, but he's not as hot as Michelle. Once again, this is, I think I could have done a whole slideshow presentation called there's Obama, but he's not as hot as Michelle. Like he's just not, um, at least I think even he recognizes that, but here Michelle is, uh, she's got her matching gloves on. She has her cute little, oh gosh, what are those things called when you like their tiny purses? I can't remember what they're called, but she's got Ouch. her. Yeah, yeah, her clutch. <laughs> they look really, it looks really good. Like, she just looks so happy. Um, honestly, I probably even get married in that dress. Like, that's how classy it is. Super cute. And then to wrap things up, um, this is uh, Michelle's outfit on her day that she had to hand over the White House to uh, the Trumps. 
she's doing uh it's a very muted red and black color scheme it almost looks navy and red actually but it's still it seems to be her go-to color scheme uh here she looks very supportive of melania um once again even though i know she was like very very sad to leave the white house um i believe in the documentary she talked about having uh Ma Malia and Sasha's friends over one last time for a sleepover and I thought that was super cute um you never guess that she had some slight sleep sleep deprivation from dealing with the small kids all night prior um but yeah she looks really she looks really good here she's still a class act um I don't know if she like personally likes the Trumps I well I take that back I know she doesn't but here, you would never guess. Here, it just looks like Melania is one of her good friends from uh, well, either one of Malia and Sasha's parents' PTA meetings. Uh, but yeah, that's Michelle. But those are some of my uh, favorite looks of hers. And uh, thank you guys so much for having me. It's been great. Well, thank you for being on, Alani. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Alani. Thank I you. like how uh, you are right when you showed that picture. Um, uh, and you're like, yeah, she kind of looks like my mom there. I was like, yeah, you know what? She kind of does. And that is not an insult to you or her. That's like a promotion. Yeah. For I'm you. Both ways. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like her to, I don't know. Now I, I can't. My mom. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say anything without insulting my mom now. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I wish that was my mom. I'm like, no, I love my mom. My mom's special in her own way. Yes, of course. And she's beautiful and lovely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, like, she don't got no fancy boots that cost thousands and thousands of sparkly dollars. So, you know, neither do I. So, <laughs> well, thank like, you so much, Alani. Go ahead, Noah. Thanks for having me. Well, thank Great. you. Yeah, I also like how you like you know what you know. Like you know, fashion world leaders. No, don't care to learn it. Don't need to know it. Cinch yeah. waist. I know about cinch waist. We'll talk about cinch waist all day. <laughs> know what you love. <laughs> thank you Alani thank you. <laughs> all right guys we are hitting our grand finale of the evening um I am very excited about this next segment this is actually a live show that has been adapted uh to our virtual comedy show and uh your next uh comedian is absolutely wonderful she's performed all over the DC area uh and more DC improv Richmond funny bone the DC draft house and so many places on the East Coast. And this is the exciting part for us. She's the producer and host of the interactive comedy show, uh, Smash Storytelling and Black Card Denied Game Show. So uh, please give it up for our wonderful host, Michelle Sometimes. Hello. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am so glad to be here. I am uh, uh, super excited to talk about uh, Michelle Obama because she not only, as Alani pointed out, a fashion icon, but she and I both have the same name. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we both have that overbite, which I was ashamed about for such a long time. It was like an awful thing when it had, I had braces and all of those things, but then, um, I accidentally threw my retainer away at the Roy Rogers uh, uh, restaurant in the trash can and it just all slipped back out. But you know what? Barack Obama became president and I saw the queen, Michelle Obama, with her slight overbite. And I'm like, you know what? That's a sign of knowledge and power and I'll take it. <laughs> so have you both watched the documentary? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. It sounds like you, a guy you guys have. And so I, I, I think that you'll do pretty well on this quiz. Uh, I am going to quiz you on, um, on different points that stood out to me uh, when I watched the documentary Becoming. So are you ready? Yes. Yes. So welcome to Becoming a Quiz Show. All and right. if uh, anyone's uh, want, if anyone wants to comment in YouTube or on Facebook uh, and chime in, feel free to play at home. Feel free to play at home. Um, usually, on a, in a live audience, uh, uh, 
we we kick it out to other folks to give a uh, phone a friend to our 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 um, <laughs> our contestants Noah and and Kasha. So feel free to yes. play along. I gotta say, as, as the only white dude on the show tonight, I am actively rooting against myself. So okay. <laughs> well, you were well, you were already talking about certain parts of the um of the show, so I'm I, I hope that you do well. Okay, I feel I, I feel good about it. All right. In the very beginning of the documentary, Michelle's in the back of the truck and the, uh, going to where she needs to, to, to be. What determines what kind of mu travel music Michelle listens to in her iPod? Is it A, if she's in the mood to sext Barry? Is it B, if she wants to be inspired? Is it C, if she wants to bump it out? Or D, both B and C. Let's let's go let's go to uh Kasha. Let's let's we'll go to you first, Kasha. What, what do you... does bump it out mean? Is that the <laughs> same thing as A? <laughs> I, I I have no idea. I can't help. Duh. Well, if I learned anything from the SATs, you always pick the one that includes both answers. So I think the answer is D. You are correct. Yeah. Both B and C. I still don't know what bump it out means. And neither do I, but that is the actual phrase she used, which is why I use this as my first question. I'm like, what the heck is bump it out? Bump it out. She's like, trying to be hit, but mm -mm, that don't work. See, I, I didn't know that beforehand, but bump it out made sense to me. Like, yeah, sometimes you gotta bump, bump it, it out. out. Bump it out, I have no idea. What With Missy is. Elliott, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. On her last day in the White House, Alani talked about this a little bit. Why did Michelle break down into tears when she gets into Air Force One on her way to the inauguration? Is it A, oh, this is yours, Noah. Mm -hmm. Is it A, it was just a cathartic release? Is it B, she was horrified that Donald Trump was moving in? Was it C, she was horrified at the prospect of moving to Adams Morgan? <laughs> Or is it D, the moving company had lost her favorite photo album? I think B was the unspoken answer, but the real answer is A. You are right. It Woo! was a cathartic release. Yes. Okay. She got into that car and like, you know what? I couldn't have an attitude this whole time for eight years. I'm going to let it all out <laughs> in this helicopter ride home. <laughs> Next. What is the name of Michelle Obama's brother? Is it A, Michael, B, Kevin, C, Craig, or D, David? <laughs> I just have to express my laughter at these questions. <laughs> That's answer. Chelsea. Um, can I have an assist from Chelsea on this one? I feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel like she knows it. <laughs> uh, I don't know it. I don't know it. But I okay. I was just laughing at Craig David. <laughs> well, I'll give don't, you, I'll... don't question the way I put my uh yeah, I mean <laughs> my, is my answers. I mean, this is completely sidetracked. Um I'm gay, but have you all <laughs> seen Craig David lately? I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, I've been quarantined a long time. I hope I'm gay at the end of this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um Someone mentioned Craig. Leon, was it you? You can bring up Leon. <laughs> yeah. We're just bringing uh, the whole family back at this point. <laughs> yes. right. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, so it's my video work. Okay. All right. Yeah, sorry. I got delayed. Um, apparently, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm the afterthought like Craig. So. <laughs> but yes, I do believe that's his name. Uh, I believe. Um, although I, I was happy when I saw Craig David, too. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Ooh, wait, Drake wait, wait. on Tuesday. Yeah. He was making love on Wednesday, on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. We chilled on Sunday. I'm oh, sorry, that was a great song. You have the rights to that song, Craig. That was yeah. I was about to say yeah. We do not have the rights to that song. Sue me if you have to sue anybody. That was Leon. Yeah, yeah. I think, pitch, pitch I think was so it's perfect. Like, we'll get I think auto struck. It's Michael or right. Evan. It was Craig. He was what? correct, Craig, because he said it like Craig. 17 times right before yeah, I went on. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus, it's gonna be so easy. Well, like, this is how nobody listened to my set. I said oh, crap like eight times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving. You guys are doing a good job. Should I turn my video off? Should I go away? Nah, you can stay up. You guys can both stay up. Come okay. on, stay up. All right. 
We want to, you gotta watch, if you don't watch, if you haven't watched the documentary, Chels, you gotta at least, if you haven't watched, or read the book, you gotta watch the documentary. I mean, I, have you watched the Tiger King? See, that's how I had to watch it. <laughs> I haven't watched that either. <laughs> Where did Michelle Obama attend college? A, Princeton. B, Harvard. C, both A and B. D, Yale. Uh, that one's C. She went Princeton undergrad, Harvard Law. And you know. are correct, Noah. Right. Very good. Very good. Ooh. And that is something that we learned from Michelle Obama in general. Is that she's just so much better and smarter than all of us. I mean, there um, should be an E. I'm yeah. pretty sure she attended all of the Ivy League schools. So <laughs> she might have visited, but her degrees. <laughs> With her Michelle's magic right. powers, she could have done that. Turner. She went to all of them. <laughs> okay, here's a tricky one. During the first campaign trail, uh, what stereotype did conservative media try to paint Michelle Obama as? A, a black welfare queen. B, angry black woman. C, an ice queen. Or D, just your typical uncivilized colored. Isn't it E, all of the above? <laughs> Are there any other suggestions? I, <laughs> I think I know what it is. And um, I want all of us, besides Michelle, because she obviously knows the answer, to say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Angry black B, woman. E, angry black woman. <laughs> yeah. However, all of the above would be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. I had to put nice. that on there. Nice. <laughs> Ice so cream. Both Tasha and Chelsea are correct. Because, no. come on. <laughs> there was one moment during the documentary when they talked about, like, they did a fist bump and the media called it a terrorist fist jab. And I got yeah. upset all over it for them, being like, <laughs> what, what is that even? A terrorist fist jab. Like, that's what, like, this, you know, I don't know. Right before 9 11, right before the pains took off, they just fist bumped. <laughs> okay. What gift did the book tour staff give her for her 56th birthday? Was it A? a because she turned 39 again. <laughs> a bracelet with Sandor charms. B, a gift card to Lululemon. C, a selfie stick. Or D, a framed picture of them. I hope it was D. Like, I, <laughs> that's such a bold thing to give. Let's a bring on Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sandy. I just, I wanted to weigh in on that one. I hope it would be terrible, but I hope it was D. <laughs> <laughs> Any other guesses? <laughs> I just hope it wasn't C. I hope it wasn't a selfie stick. Oh. You, can get a, you can get it at 7 Eleven. And that's like, that's a kind of a horrible gift to give. Your boss. Yeah. Prepare to be disappointed, Leon. Prepare very to be disappointed. very disappointed. I think, oh, wow. I think A is wow, really? A is no. <laughs> a selfie stick. No. Wow. Okay. I mean, what do you get for the woman who has everything? Yeah. A selfie okay, fair stick. Enough. Fair enough. She, must have want, she must have asked him for it. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a joke and they took it seriously. <laughs> I hope it was at least engraved with something meaningful. It, was so it wasn't. They just had time to teach her how to use that. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really I'm glad you put that in there. <laughs> the last 10 years. How did Michelle Obama describe the milestone of her 56th birthday? Did she describe it as now she could round up to 60? B, she could now qualify for her AARP card? C, she qualified for a senior discount at Denny's. Or is it D, she could no longer wear pants that were low rise? I think it's A. A. Boom. And any other guesses? D. <laughs> I really don't remember. I, I said D with a question mark. <laughs> I say C. I C. That she felt that on the inside. But the answer was A. She kept saying, oh, I'm, I round up to 60 now. Very good. Okay. Nice. Nice. Because I don't think she qualifies for an AARP card or the discount at Denny's at 56. Really? I yeah. thought you get an AARP card at 40. I think it's like 55 or 50. I so I don't know. 55, isn't it? Oh. I think so. I mean, I should know. I, I did some work for them before. I, like, I worked there for a little while. And I, I, I don't even know. And I worked here. Oh, you work at La Rosa. You're not a Latino. You worked at AARP. And you're like, 
Well, ARB has a really good digital department. I don't know. They just, they, they just, they, you know, I, 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 I slide in places. I don't know. Man, I would love to see the crazy lies on Leon's resume. I oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. I, I was, I worked for Obama too. So, all right. That's According to my resume. <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right. What disease, this is a sad one, did Michelle Obama's father have? Poor little out for him. Uh, he was black, right? So, diabetes. <laughs> Oh my yeah. gosh, <laughs> Was it A? You know what, because you know, I was halfway thinking I was gonna put one of the choices being high blood pressure, but I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes, B, uh, was it throat, uh, thyroid cancer, mm. C, muscular dystrophy, or D, multiple sclerosis? MS is nasty, man. The only reason I said, oh my gosh, Chelsea, is because like the actual thing is way worse. <laughs> What? <laughs> I mean, he probably did have diabetes. Sorry. <laughs> God, I mean, yeah. It might not have been the thing to take him out, but he probably had it. Chances are. But we want the one that took him out. Which one was that? I think it was D, right? That was C. Oh. Mm. It is D. Oh, D. Man, multiple mm. sclerosis is. Yeah. That's, that's a. That's yeah. a nasty one. I hope I hope we find out mm-hmm. for that too. Yes, yes. <clears throat> you got my my the C. You, you, you fell for C, Noah. You see, I'm a but, teacher, so I know how to use put those distractors in there. You're yeah, welcome. I, well, I feel like I should still get points. <laughs> <laughs> um, no stereotypes will get you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tricky one, and our final question. Who was not one of the featured interviewers on Michelle Obama's Becoming documentary? Was it A, Stephen Colbert, B, Robin Roberts, C, Oprah Winfrey, D, Phoebe Robinson? I think it's D. You think it's D? I also think it's D, but I don't know who Robin Roberts is. Mm. Oh, then the Good Morning cool. America. Yeah. Can mm-hmm. I say something slightly unrelated? Yes. Gail was one of the interviewers, and I know this documentary was a lot about like women finding their own voice, but a couple of times I was like, hush up, Gail. Let, let Michelle yeah. talk. She is so much more interesting <laughs> right now. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> like, Gail, Gail it just, has like, her this is not about you, Gail. Yeah. <laughs> I know that you're trying to be in an Oprah's shadow, but you're gonna what you're gonna do is stand yourself in Michelle Obama's shadow. That's what you're gonna do. Don't talk about Gail like that. Gail has carved out a little a little space for herself. She's very talented, okay? I'm Who's sure Gail? She is. I'm sure she is. But you know, just, like, uh, like, just like me and you, uh Chelsea Short, we are very talented, but we'll always end up playing the black or the gay best friend. That's how it is. Nah, so it's better than the like cab your driver. You got your own material. Bam. There you go. It's true. Self-produced. <laughs> got to do. Like Oprah Winfrey does. Yeah. <laughs> Not what Gail does. This is a tough one because all of these people were on the actual book tour. For, for real. Oh. Yes. But there was I- only one that wasn't shown on the documentary, and that is Miss Robin Robinson. Oh, I don't remember Phoebe Robinson being there. She was. I was so proud of her. <laughs> I was very excited about that. I I'm think surprised. I got that half right. I said I didn't know who she was, so that means she wasn't at the in the very the ones that she, the ones that was with her at the uh, round table with all the teenagers, and she was on the stage a couple times. They had her. The girl Robin was- Roberts has her own story. She's she's a baddie too. She's she's fantastic. That'll be next edition of novel comedy. <laughs> Robin Roberts go. inside. She's got a mysterious some books. life. She sure wrote she one like with yeah. her mom. <laughs> uh, Chelsea, would you read that book if we did that show? No. Would you pretend to? Uh, she would say she would say she might, but she would not. She would show up day of and be like, "No, I did not read it." I mean, listen, if you're asking me if I want to do a recurring segment on this show about the unread book report, <laughs> and she will make the promise that she will never read one of those. Books. I will never read again. I don't even know what this slide says. 
Oh boy. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We're going to leave everyone so up here for our end of the show. So did we, did we pass? You did pass. You we all got, got our coming card. Coming. You got your liberal uh, a card. I don't know what you get. You know, I don't know what you get for this. We, we had a fun you time. Know, that was actually you. really fun. It was nice to talk to more than one person at a time. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see my friends again. Yeah. 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 Um, I'd like to end the show with um, some jokes that I found that I think would really summer. No one knows where this is going. <laughs> He's like, I really tried dissuading you from doing this, but there's a lot gonna... of. If you want to do this, it's your call. Go ahead and do it. I'm not going to say you don't have to do it, but if this is what you want to do, go for it. That is um, your reaction every time I pitch any joke to you. <laughs> no, it's like, okay, well, <laughs> you're doing your best, I guess. <laughs> All right. These are going to be like in an Obama joke book one day, I'm sure. But uh, are, are you going to deliver them in an Obama impression? Oh. All right. Well, you're doing it now. <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 uh. What does Brock sound like? I don't even know. Make sure, so you get your plum. Make sure you get your plum in the, in the picture. Uh. The message at the end of the documentary was that you can do it. You've just got to believe in yourself. Okay. Oh, uh, hi, Michelle. Hi. Hi, Noah and Chelsea and Leon <laughs> and Elani and Sandy. What is Michelle Obama's favorite genre of music? What? Uh, ba, 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 ba. That's him buffering. Ba, ba. ba rock and roll. Wow. Wow. Hey, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It worked. I liked it. Don't worry, I got two more. So All right. You didn't write these, right? No. Okay, good. My joke writing's not this good. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next one, I will do in Michelle's voice, even though I don't remember what she sounds like at this moment. So, I mean, I kind of do, but like, you know, it's hard to. Okay, I'll just do it. What did Barack say? That's not it. That's not it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not it. Okay, here, Chelsea, I'm going to say it and then you repeat it. What did Barack Obama say when he dropped his shell at the beach? Give me your Michelle Obama impression. Hey, queen. Girl, you did it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Gosh, what, what was the line? Was <laughs> what did Barack say when he dropped his shell at the beach? Hey, queen. <laughs> what did Barack say when he dropped his shell at the beach? <laughs> oh, no, Michelle. <laughs> Oh, I got it. Goodbye. <laughs> One more. One more. Uh, and then the last one is, what did Barack say during the quarantine? I don't, I don't want to be Obama self. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh, that was devastating. Obama. That you know, we could have ended with the really good game show by Michelle, but I just thought we needed to end <laughs> on something uh, a little cheesier and, um, yeah. you know, really bringing in the community. Mm, that's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Well, thank you, everyone, for participating. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, Noah, would you like to say anything? Uh, I'd like to give a special shout out to Stall and Save Books. They're our in-person place whenever we can do shows like that. Uh, you can go to solidstate.com and you can order books from them. You can order t-shirts from right now. It'd be great to support them while they're out because we'd like to have a place to come back to when we can see you all live and in person again. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and we'll have uh, future shows now that we know that this can work and it is a lot of fun. Um, and I'll post uh, everyone's social media. So give everyone here a follow, follow Novel Comedy and donate because uh, this is a donation-based show. We will split that with the performers and Solid State Books. So thank you all very much. And everyone, we can just give a big group goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.